Hey guys, it's Stevie Stroh, and what are we going to be looking at today? Well, we're going to be looking at this. This is the TRS-80 Micro Color Computer, also known as the MC-10. I've had a few of these. I've added them to my collection when I started collecting Cocos, and I, as of yet, have not done much with my MC-10. So today I'm going to uh, fire up the MC-10 and not only that I'm going to go ahead and uh, add my MCX-128 memory expander which I've purchased many years ago for the rainy day that I might want to use it. I'm going to explore what it's like to use the MC server which is kind of like drive wire for the MC-10 to load files into the MC-10 over a serial cable. So what are the pieces that we're going to be playing with here today boys and girls? Well I'm glad you ask because I'm going to show you. Well. We're not going to use the box. We are going to use this, the Micro Color Computer 10. And we're going to be opening up this expansion port here. We are going to be using this, the MCX128 that I purchased quite some long time ago. It is still sealed in its anti-static bag. And I will also be enclosing it in this which is the um, earlier uh, 3D printed case that John Strong was making for this device. I got this at a Coco Fest a few years ago. I bought a blemished one for a scant $13 US. So I will be combining these three pieces and, um, and seeing what happens. So let's look at the before right now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in an RF cable. I'm gonna plug in power. I'm going to flip a switch and boom it has booted up I am going to type in on this exquisite keyboard print mem and right now we are seeing the leftover change of the whopping four kilobytes that come included in this unit so of the 4k we've got roughly 3k available to basic not bad but wait there's more I will shut it down I will put together the MCX-128 and we will fire it up and we'll see what it looks like. So stay tuned boys and girls, more to come. Okay, so just to give you a slightly more close up look, this is what the cartridge looks like. You can kind of see the silk screening here. It says copyright 2015 Darren Atkinson and then down here at the bottom it says MCX-128 memory expansion for the MC-10 and then these are the two halves to the 3D printed case that I will put it in to assemble it and then this is what the back of the MC-10 looks like when you take off its protective cover exposing its expansion port to the elements. Okay this is what the assembled cartridge looks like pretty straightforward just simple case we're gonna go ahead and sl slap it in here we now have the extremely non-obtrusive looking uh, memory expansion here. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and flip the switch. Oh my god. Look at this now. So we have a couple of options here. We have Micro Color Basic, we have MCX Basic, and MCX Basic Large. Let's try the initial Micro Color Basic. And now at this point, I would imagine if I do a print mem, this would look, okay, now here's a really good question. Where is the backspace key on the MC-10? Here we go. Um, this will hopefully look like the 20 meg upgrade normally. Actually, so this is like 40 megs. Okay, so this is giving like 32K of memory. So normal micro color basic has got about 30k available to it. This is actually better than you get on most color computer twos with extended basic and 64k. Or it's right on par with that. Let's take a look at MCX basic normal. Okay. 2.1. I don't know if that is the latest greatest. This has got 28 megabytes of memory. So this must be the one that adds the uh, like extended basic command. So I'd imagine some of that graphic space is now taken up in memory. Now let's try MCX basic 
large weight how much would you pay all right 47 megabytes of ram that's insane in basic that's more ram than any color computer has seen in basic in its life um, that's an insane amount of RAM. It's, I'm sure Jim Gary will find something to do with this. But um, right now I've scratched the surface. I have unboxed the Beast. The MC10 is fired up. The MCX128 expansion is here. I now need to do a little tiny bit of research to see if there are any updates to the MCX128, like firmware updates or basic flash ROM updates. And then I need to do a little bit of homework to see how to um, use MC to pull something off of, uh, you know, pull something off the wire into the MC10. I think that would be kind of cool to pull up um, some Jim Gary goodies on my real MC10 over MC and, and just look at an MC10 program on an actual MC10. So stay tuned for that, boys and girls. The excitement never stops here. All MC10, all the time. Stevie Stroh saying, be back soon. All right, guys. So in the last part of this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it's like to run the MC protocol, which is kind of like DriveWire for the MC10. And it kind of lets you run your MC10 like you had a, a floppy drive. It's pretty cool. The load and load M commands work. Now, um, I'm not going to get into the nuts and the bolts of how to set up the MC server. I will just tell you this right now that I am using Pi Drive Wire. Pi Drive Wire does support MC, but it has some limitations right now because it's still kind of a work in progress. So I'm just going to do a couple of quick tests and I'm not going to get into the configuration side of this. But suffice it to say, I was able to figure all of this out by doing this thing they call reading. I was able to read the MCX um, manuals from the MCX website and uh, figure out what all the basic commands were in the MC server commands. And then I looked at Mikey's Pi Drive Wire uh, documentation to figure out what I needed to do to set the path to where the files were here. Uh, in a future video, I'll get a little bit more in depth and a little bit more technical, but I literally kind of hacked and slashed my way through here just to do a proof of concept and it's cool and it works. Later on, I'll do a more in depth um, MC setup tutorial as I learn it better myself. But let's go ahead and boot into the MCX Basic. I am running Pi Drive Wire on a uh, Windows PC. I'm connected via a serial cable. And if I type in dir, I'm going to see the folders that exist in a folder I have set up in my path for MC. And I've pulled a few um, different files here. So one of them, which I thought was pretty cool, was a, a Dragon Castle game. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a load dr. A G O N. -A yes. And I can tell you what, I'm really enjoying. Um, using the MC10 keyboard. It is it is a pleasure. So I'm going to go ahead and load it. it. should load pretty quickly. This is going over serial. And just to show you, if I hit list, that's the program that I just loaded. It's a basic program. And one of the things I'm noticing here as I list it is there are cool ways to get your graphics characters into your print statements in uh, Micro Color Basic. And now I am going to run the program here. And as you can see, the game has come up, Dragon Castles. And this is a game where you have to uh, get treasure and get points and reach a certain score to not get killed by the dragon. So in this case here, for difficulty level one, I would need to reach 300 points and getting treasure. Uh, if I find the dragon before I've gotten a high enough score, the dragon will kill me. But right now I need to randomly search through the eight castles find treasure, get points, get my score up to 300, and hopefully not meet the dragon in the process. If I meet the dragon before I reach the score, I will die. But let's just try one room, just for grins and giggles. We'll try uh, Castle 1, and let's see what we get. And I found a spear worth 75. So I am on my way to victory so far. Pretty cool stuff, right? So that's what it's like loading a basic program. It's kind of like... Um, 
loading it from from uh, what we on the Coco know as disk extended color basic right we're just using the dir command and we use load if it's basic we use load m if it's machine language so in this case here there is a pretty cool pac-man game if i do a load m i do the load m of the pacman.c10 because this one happens to be binary and i hit exec here we go we've now booted up the pac-man game so what we can see here is that one of the many cool features of adding the MCX128 upgrade to your MC10 is it gives you much more memory than the stock Tandy memory upgrade. The, tan the Tandy upgrade added 16K to the stock 4K, bringing you to a maximum of 20K. This gives you 128K of RAM. This also gives you enhanced basic commands that did not exist in standard microcolor basic and so you have a lot of the commands you would find in what we'd call the Coco's extended color basic so uh, line circle paint P mode those commands are there and then last but not least the whole MC protocol which is a way to load disks cassettes files and binary files and all kinds of stuff over a serial cable similar to the Coco's drive wire that is a cool feature too and you've just seen me load up a couple of games here. I loaded a basic program and I loaded a binary assembly language program all using the MC protocol and the built-in commands that it adds to microcolor basic. So all in all if you've got an MC10 and you've got an MCX128 you've got yourself a beast of a machine and a cool way to enjoy a plethora of software that is available for the MC10 in a fairly easy to um, access way. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. We now have seen history in the making. I have used an MC10. I have recorded a video on the MC10. Cats and dogs living in harmony. What else can happen? I don't know. But let's hope it's good. Thank you for watching. OG Stevie Stroh saying MC10, people. Peace out, everybody.